welcome back. Early on the morning of April 10th, 1979, it was clear to forecasters that the ingredients were in place for weather disaster. We had the honor of speaking with John Van Dunk, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, which at the time was stationed in Wichita Falls, and he was working on that fateful day. Well, I came to work and spent about one hour looking at the maps and saw all the moisture coming up from the southeast and saw the dry line forming out in West Texas and saw the cold air coming in aloft. You just can't have all that warm air and moisture in the lower levels of the cold air aloft without something rising and causing trouble. Now, for severe weather to occur, a number of ingredients have to come together. First, moisture. Moisture is the fuel that thunderstorms use to keep it themselves going. Two, warm air, particularly warm air in the low levels. Warm air rises, and it's that rising motion that forms the thunderstorms. And three, lift, some kind of a forcing mechanism, often a cold front or some kind of frontal boundary that sparks the thunderstorms. And four, for the really severe weather, you need rotating winds. What that means is winds in the lower levels moving in one direction and winds in the upper levels moving in a different direction so that those winds rotate with height. That's how the supercell thunderstorms form, the thunderstorms capable of producing the most deadly tornadoes. On a Tuesday morning, John Van Dunk saw that a number of these ingredients were in place. He had southeast winds bringing in a lot of moisture out of the Gulf. There were high dew points, high humidities, and plenty of moisture for these thunderstorms to work with. Two, you had the jet stream aloft, so the winds were moving in different directions at the surface than they were in the upper levels, so the thunderstorms had that rotation needed to become severe, and you also had this strong cold front on the back side. That worked as a plow, just pushing everything out ahead of it, and that gave those thunderstorms the spark they needed to get going. Tuesday afternoon, things took a turn for the worse. Things really heated up, and that gave the lower levels that lift that they needed to form the thunderstorms, and a dry line formed through the panhandle. Along that dry line, those thunderstorms just exploded. And with the jet stream in place, those thunderstorms had the rotation necessary to become severe in nature. The first tornado formed at 3.05 in the afternoon near Kroll, Texas. It wasn't until 5.55 in the evening that the Wichita Falls tornado formed just to the southwest of the city. Now, the tornado only took five to 10 minutes to roar through the heart of Wichita Falls, moving in a northeasterly direction. But in those five to 10 minutes, the destruction was incredible. Now, this was a very rare tornado. Most tornadoes only last a few minutes and only make it a few miles. This tornado, after moving through Wichita Falls, went on a 47-mile tear through Oklahoma. Now, it was unfortunately right when it moved through Wichita Falls that it was at its strongest. As we headed through the evening, out ahead of this cold front, severe thunderstorms continued to spawn tornadoes. But as these tornadoes did not hit heavily populated areas, they were not as severe or as devastating as the one that went through Wichita Falls. As things finally started to calm down in the evening, John Van Dunk was able to grasp the severity of the situation. You know, that was the first time it hit me, I was so busy, that maybe I didn't have a home. Where was the family? You know, where was my wife? Did they get, telephone communication was gone, I couldn't call, they couldn't call. And driving home that night, and going past the hospital with no lights, and getting out on the freeway, which is now the Grace Freeway around Lake Kickapoo, I mean the uh, airport there at Kickapoo. I saw wires across the road, I saw cars rolled over on, off the road. I almost didn't want to go any further. It was a thing I'll never forget. Thankfully, Mr. Van Dunk's wife and children were safe, but 42 others lost their lives as a direct result of the massive F4 tornado. An additional three people died of heart attacks during the storm, and almost 2,000 people were injured. More than 3,000 homes, 1,000 apartment units, 100 businesses, and two schools were completely destroyed, with many others sustaining serious damage, leaving an estimated 20,000 Wichita Falls residents without a home. To put it all in perspective, cost of the storm was more than $400 million, and between loss of life and property damage, this is still considered one of the most devastating tornadoes in United States history. Now, many lives were saved that day due to the hard work of forecasters and the storm spotters involved. Since then, technologies have continued to improve forecasting capabilities, making for earlier and more accurate warnings. Meteorologist Eric Adame has more on how things have changed at the National Weather Service since Terrible Tuesday.